Welcome to the Vid Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Y. LaPointe. This show focuses on the international business of television and film distribution, including co-productions, formats, and new media content. Proudly based in the greater Vancouver area, also known as Hollywood North, we're about to learn how people in our industry are expanding their footprint and finding the right partners around the world. Let's get things started and learn from each other and the experts within our field. This podcast was created by And Now Global and is available as an audio format on Apple, Spotify, and Android application. Welcome everybody to the Vid Podcast. This is episode four. Uh, this is also the last episode virtual market series. And today I'm very excited to be joined by Lauren Garod uh, of MIPCOM. She is the head of the television division at Reed Medem. Uh, welcome, Lorene. Thank you for joining me uh, today. How are you? Hello and hello, everybody. Well, I'm fine. <laughs> Happy to be with you. So let's get started. Um, this has been an ex- interesting year, to say the least, uh, with many pivots. And um, you guys were clearly the, the very first market that had to pivot so quickly in April with MIP TV which unfortunately got canceled at the uh, beginning of March. How was that experience uh, turning around? How how was it even possible to turn around in three weeks and do an online event? It was possible because we wanted it to be possible. Um, It was possible because we had so much great content that we've been working on for so many months um, that we really wanted to share with the industry. And all our partners wanted to do the same thing. So we were driven by this desire to share what we had. And so everybody worked very quickly. We've had uh, development plans for online. So we had a a strategy. It's just that we had to, uh, we spurred it into action faster than we thought. (laughs) But but it was actually a very exciting time. The teams worked like crazy, obviously. Uh, It was during the lockdown and We weren't yet used to working remote, so in itself, that was quite a feat. But the most important thing was to share the content, the drama screenings, the um, in-development pitches, the MIPDOC library, uh, and many, many more, and of course, the online database. But we put it all together in record time uh, to share with the industry. What were the challenges that you learned from that experience that ultimately has led you to where you are today? And... You know, for full context, like MIPCOM is now going to take place in three weeks' time uh, with a much more expanded online offering. So what were the challenges that you faced back in March and April that you are now uh, changing and implementing into the, the new MIPCOM of October? We had over 5,000 uh, participants uh, that we had over 3,000 hours of video content viewed and quite great engagement of uh, the average time spent was 36 minutes in a session. So we had some very good things happen. Um, What we did learn, uh, and it's not a surprise, is that people consume differently online. Um, And that's something people need more time, especially during the TV, it was really at the beginning. Uh, People's lives were all disrupted at home and at work. So just, the timing was difficult. We extended the, um, the whole MIP TV Online Plus for an additional week. The first learning is that it needs, content needs to be on demand for a longer time. The second is not so much a learning, but just that we weren't able, due to the time constraints, to develop more networking functions. Clearly, MIP TV is a business market. We had the online database. We had the uh, as I said before, the doc, the doc, the digital library, but we weren't, we didn't have the time to develop more uh, networking capabilities. So we were really uh, focused on the content. All right. So let's take a look at the hybrid format that you now had uh, at the, at the beginning of the summer. Uh, how hard was that to implement considering, you know, just what was happening with the pandemic um, I, I can just imagine the debates that must have happened within Reed Medem as, as to how it should be shaped. So how was that thought about and, and you know, how did you recognize the, the risks involved in all that? The first thing is 
like everybody or many people, we thought this would all go away pretty fast. I'm talking about the COVID situation. Uh, so at first we were planning MIPCOM normally, uh, and it was sometime in June when we really understood uh, the extent of the restrictions, the travel restrictions, the company, corporate situations, just the reality that this was lasting just longer and had repercussions that were way beyond what anybody would have expected. So uh, of course we've been working on digital as I was saying, strategies before, and we had we very quickly started to look at digital complement would be the idea in June when we saw uh, and understood the, the um, extent of the situation, we uh, thought that it was really important to uh, create a digital complement to allow people who couldn't travel to participate to NIPCOM. Actually, some of the keynotes from the very beginning were going to be virtual because we knew these people were not going to travel, but that was fine. So we started working in a way with saying, let whoever needs to be virtual is virtual, whoever is physical is physical, and we will work it out so that all that we create. I mean, the, the overlying um, thinking, the way we've been thinking is that we are a global community, that is what MIPCOM is, and we need to make that happen whichever way that may happen. <laughs> You know? So the digital complement was really about being, making sure that everybody could participate in the way that was right for them. But uh, what stage this summer did did people internally start to think, uh oh, this is going to be very difficult to to do a hybrid model because first BBC was the first to announce that they were not going to send uh, their employees to the market, um, and then many others followed, and one of the last ones to announce that. I believe it was either at the end of August or early September was was Banerjee saying that they too would would have their you know the interests of their of their employees and and not send them uh, during this pandemic and of course the rising cases in the United States would make it impossible for Americans to come same thing with Brazil um, it just seemed like everything was you know completely out of any of our control right so at one point this summer did did people internally start saying, you know what, this might not work out? We've been, of course, in touch with our clients throughout. And for instance, you mentioned BBC. We've been working with BBC on their online presence. So we were working with many of our clients, for instance, the global upfronts, which are one of the big uh, new features at this MIPCOM and still are. Um, they were initially going to be all in the Grand Auditorium. And then when we realized that some companies wouldn't be able to travel, they still were going to be in the Grand Auditorium, but uh, it would be remote in terms of the actual presentation. So we were looking at that kind of, I'm talking again about this hybrid um, model, but to say we were talking with companies and many companies about how they could participate online. Uh, and then when we realized, uh, this was in end of July, when we announced that uh, we would be doing rendezvous can, the physical market in can, which was to be particularly for the European companies, basically companies that could travel. And we really thought that was possible. Of course, at that point, the digital part was bigger because the United States, as you said, LATAM and many of the big companies couldn't travel, which is why our program became very, very important in terms of digitally with speakers and global upfronts, et cetera. And then it became very, very clear after the summer that uh, restrictions in Europe were just growing and growing. Quarantine from the UK, restrictions from Germany. Well, I mean, just the situation is not good right now. Very clear that uh, the full replacement in terms of digital strategy was the way to go. And that's where our clients are. I mean, we, when, as I said, it's been a gradual process. We've had on board many of our clients digitally, so now it's everybody. I mean, it's a strange situation. We're sad not to be in Cannes. Uh, the industry uh, is missing uh, not meeting. It's a very difficult thing for the whole industry and we want to help and we wanted really to bring people back together, back to business, you know, in Cannes. Uh, but now we, the mission is, is a little different, but it's the same. It's to bring the industry back together right now online and then we'll be back to Cannes in due time in 2021. Definitely been a challenging year uh, to say the least. So 
it was it was almost like the writing was on the wall. I myself, as as a delegate, I uh, decided early on uh, that although Canada is kind of a little bit safer, relatively speaking, that uh, rather than prepare for some for something that would change at the last minute, I would prepare myself for the digital format. So let's dive right into MIPCOM online plus because this is where we are now at and there's a bunch of of things that um that i want to talk to you about i have had the chance to sign up had the chance to watch your webinar i've had the chance to upload my information and it's a brand new system entirely so everybody who's watching this needs to know this is a brand new system uh is completely different than what they have seen before from mipcom so in fact i would say sign up early because you're going to have to learn the system and learn how to maximize it. Um, so that, that's my advice right now. Um, who, what is the system that, that you're using? What is the technology behind it? It's called GRIP, and we've been working with that as a company uh, in the MEDEM uh, digital, market, digital event that took place in, in June, and MIPIM, our real estate um, division and, and market has been using that and um, so we are also using it and we're developing different functions but it's um, a, a tool that we know well and that we are rolling out therefore for the company. So in the system you have your own video conferencing system um, and given that it's right in the MIPCOM system uh, it, is that is that video conference uh, system secure for the viewers that they know that Absolutely. they will be having private conversations. Absolutely secure. That's extremely important for everything we do. So yes, it's, it, it's totally secure. That is really important. And the other aspect is that it has new features. As you said, it's entirely different uh, that gives recommendations, but of course it learns to know you. So it has AI capabilities, but it, and it's very important how you fill in your profile because it's all going to be in a function of what you say you're interested in and the way you also search and what you actually do. So it's going to come up with recommendations and uh, has a number of, of different functionalities, but uh, security is absolutely one of those. So it feels more like a social media platform at first glance, looking at the webinar and, and kind of playing around with it very quickly over the weekend. It, it does feel like a social media platform. Uh, which is more reason for people to sign on as early as possible. One confusion I had is in the press release, it said that all the meetings could start being booked on October 5th. However, I get the sense from your recent documents that uh, actually people can start booking their meetings now. Yes, they can booking meetings now. Uh, there are people signing up every day and actually it's very exciting the support we're getting from the industry. So, it's going to be, it's being updated constantly. People can start now. It's, but you're taking meetings for the week of MIPCOM, what we're calling, the whole thing is centered around what we're calling MIPCOM week, which is the 12th to the 16th are the dates. Um, and then there's a period before that's what we're calling warm up and then extensions after follow up. But so they're setting up meetings for the MIPCOM week. Is it possible for people to meet after the MIPCOM week? Right now we're doing it so that it's during that week because from what we hear in terms of our, our client feedback is that what makes MIPCOM so great is that concentrated energy that everybody's meeting at that time. It, it's really important. If you dilute that, that's not a very good thing. So that's why we're concentrating on those days. Now after that, networking capabilities will continue like chat and, and others, but the actual meetings and the, the, the availabilities, uh, because you're supposed to put your availabilities when you can have meetings, when you can't, that part, the structured part is that week. So one of the things I noticed was that, um, and, and this is the reason why people have to sign up in advance, is that you have to connect with somebody online uh, first, and they have to accept you almost like a friend exchange on social media before you can start communicating with them. Whereas in the past, email lists were shared uh, so that people could quickly uh, send out emails to, to the delegates. Why is that um, a change this year? Why is the email list no longer available 
and that we're focusing just on the online uh, communications? Well, there are a couple of answers. One is privacy issues, uh, which are more important ever than ever. Uh, that's one. But the second is the really the desire uh, to, to really create an, a community that MIPCOM Online Plus is the community together and that it really takes place there and not scattered all over the place. Now, that's the intention. And, and, uh, and the way to make it more, uh, as you say, social media is to make it more spontaneous. You know, the, I think people are really used to right now doing a lot of Zoom meetings and they're perfect, they're fine, but feedback is also that it, it you know, it creates, it, life is kind of mechanical in a way. By trying a new approach, it's also to create, you know, a little bit of serendipity and finding p new people uh, and, and to explore uh, making new contacts and not to just go by the list of people you normally meet, which of course will be there as well. But so that, that is, this is really a network a tool as opposed to a um, what we've had in the past is a directory, which is great, but it's a very, it was more like a research tool. This has the same capabilities, but it's meant to be uh, friendlier, we'll say. And again, you know, this is, I think there's a learning curve and hopefully we get better every time. <laughs> uh, but it's really about how do you replicate an event online? It's very difficult. But what are the elements that are really important? You can't replicate everything online. That's why physical is so important. But what, what parts can you replicate differently? And that's what we were looking at. Uh, and part of it is the networking. And the other part uh, was the importance of content, content screenings, uh, which we thought is really important because there's so much content. Even during this pandemic, there is so much new content from around the world, uh, which is why we have, um, you know, we have three themes. We have three themes for MIPCOM, three pillars, Connect, connections, discovery, and inspiration. So we talked about connections before, but here for discovery, we thought it was so important to have a new lineup of uh, screenings. So there's the global upfronts, and then we have market screenings and country showcases. And I'm just saying that that's, we thought that was a really important part online for buyers to be able to discover new content from around the world. And I think that's very rare at this point in, the, in a curated way. And then the third thing we thought was really important, just as we had planned to do at MIPCOM, are some, I'll call them emotional moments, that the inspiration, the part of inspiration. Uh, and again, that's difficult to recreate, but that is the intention through our keynotes, because we have a really quite an impressive lineup, Ted Sarandos, Tyler Perry, Alex Amancio, and uh, Jeremy Darrock, the SDG Award, and, and, and others. And that is really, we think is, they're gonna be important moments, as well as we have the Diversified TV Awards, which we always have at, at MIPCOM, this time it's the first, fourth, fourth year. Um, and we're well, doing this live, that we're streaming live. Most things are not streamed live. But that we are, we're doing it in Paris and we are going to stream it live. And we think that's just something really important. We're trying to create some moments like that of well, wow or surprise or emotion. And let's talk about the uh, content screenings a little bit more because this is an opportunity for people to showcase their work either through MIP Junior or the Global Upfronts, like you said, what are the deadlines if people still have time to submit their projects? It's very close to the finish here. Yeah. <laughs> because the, um, we're getting, we have to communicate all this wonderful content. Uh, we also have our, our news our publication that we're doing. So it's right now, really. We have uh, the digital library for Mid Junior is still some time. I believe it's September 25th. Well, that's Friday. <laughs> It's yeah. all this week, really, because we have to market, communicate, uh, tell everything about, tell everybody about all this great content. So we have today, we have over sixty screenings, not counting, not counting the mid junior uh, library, of course. Okay. So we have a really tremendous lineup. 
from Global Upfronts, we have A&E, Discovery, Viacom, BBC, ZDF, and more. Let's talk about the inspirational moments for a second and the keynotes, because you said these are not going to be recorded live, which gives you an opportunity to potentially edit these videos with music and, and everything else. Is that part of this strategy versus these simple Zoom meetings like the one we're having now? I think they're going to be done differently depending on the keynotes. The content, the upfronts, the market screenings, we're releasing each day, all, all of it, everything we'll be announcing on a day will be out in the morning and then online on demand until, end of, until this November 17th. But for instance, the keynotes and certain events like Fresh TV that we're used to having at lunchtime in Cannes, where we're keeping to the same time slots for those um, who are on the time zone. Uh, and so they'll be issued at those times, but then they'll be on demand after that. It's not live, but it's a, it's programmed just because uh, we're going through, we're doing it as if we were in Cannes for certain things. And then certain things are live. Uh, so it's, it's all a mix and, and each, each um, approach is different depending on the content. So let's just talk through the three different segments of uh, the market. So you have uh, it all starts October 5th. Obviously, you can start to book your meetings now and start to make your connections now. But then on October 5th, that's the official MIPCOM warm-up. Um, what, do we ex what should we expect in that week? Actually, some great conference sessions because there's a uh, quite an impressive lineup of market intelligence sessions, which we've done on purpose the week before to, to get perspective and trends and really... Um, beef up information in terms of what's happening in the industry and what's going to happen in the future to the best extent possible. Uh, so we're working with many, many um, key companies on that. So that's a really important part. Uh, and then the other, well, the, 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 Mid the Mid Junior Digital Library will be online as of October 5th so that buyers can prepare the market, the same idea by looking at the content ahead of time. And the third aspect is the production funding forum, which is taking place that week. Uh, and those are divided between investor briefs and programming briefs. So these are ex companies explaining uh, their strategies in terms of investment or, and content uh, programming. And there will be a part uh, that will be a round table or breakout sessions with uh, the different speakers and those you sign up for and they will be live. So there's a part of networking there. The idea is to meet people, get information, prepare your market ahead of time to set up perhaps even more meetings from that week into the, the week of Nipcom week. But how do, how do people network during that week? They sign up for the, there are a number of sessions that are open for registration uh, as part of the production funding forum and uh, you have to pre-register, and if you take part, you can uh, ask questions to the uh, speakers. Um, it's after their session, you can network. So just, just like you, you could in a, in a physical room where you, you line up for it to talk to that, that uh, guest speaker. Yes, and I think there'll be structured discussions, uh, but you have a contact, and you can, you can discuss. Okay, that's really interesting. And then obviously we just talked about the meeting week. So the, the focus after that starting on, um, on the 12th is on Monday, the 12th is all meetings. Is there anything happening on the Saturday, Sunday uh, for mid junior before on the 10th and 11th? No, we didn't, we didn't put that in because if people are wherever they are, yeah. <laughs> we didn't think they'd be engaged as well on the weekends. On the weekend. <laughs> you know, we're stick, sticking to the week. Uh, mid junior, most of the programming is taking place on the Wednesday, so that's the 14th. The program, in terms of content program, is focused on that day with content showcases. The Matthew Cherry keynote is on that day, and the whole program is kids. Okay, well, I know the Canadians are going to appreciate that because you may or may not know it's our Thanksgiving weekend. So oh. for sure I'm happy that you're not going to be open on the Saturday, Sunday, <laughs> at the very least. I'm glad for that too. <laughs>
it finally ends with um, MIPCOM follow-up. And, and that obviously is a chance to keep going into the system for a whole month after. Uh, what can people expect from that other than like be, being able to watch on demand all the panels and the keynotes that they might have missed? Well, that is primarily that. It is to be able to watch all the content because there will be a lot of content. So yeah. be, be able to make sure you get to see everything you wanted to see. You may not have had time. And, uh, and to keep networking with uh, the people. So there is uh, the networking will continue. Okay. And... Uh, to leave people get leave the opportunity for people to to network more. Okay, great. And now that you're building up this new system with this kind of social media feel to it, is that something that could carry on into MIP TV 2021 and MIPCOM 2021? So that whoever I make connections with now could then go on to MIP TV in April? We have to see how we're going to do it. The idea is to continue, of course. So the idea is to continue to develop this and we will have learnings from this event and keep on doing new things going forward. But the idea is to build on, on this and to continue to expand and to uh, deliver the best we can to the industry. Well, as a delegate, I think it would be amazing to see that as, a, as an option for MIP TV and MIPCOM so that uh, we don't necessarily have to start from scratch. So if we've already established those relationships and had some communications, if those can somehow uh, linger on and stay uh, in, well into 2021 and beyond, I think your delegates would, would appreciate that uh, a great deal. Uh, and then finally, uh, what, what advice would you give to people now uh, if they haven't already signed up yet or if they have signed up, what, what advice do you give to people to prepare for this for this, uh, for this new virtual market? Well, similar to what you said in the beginning, first go on there soon uh, because it is new. So you have to learn to use it and get used to it, familiarize yourself, Put a, especially fill out your profile really carefully because it will impact uh, who contacts you. I mean, it will, it's really important if you fill it out well, you'll get really good results. Uh, and the third thing is that just come and join the community because that's really what it's all about. So uh, yes, come the sooner the better uh, so that we can all be together very soon. Lorraine, let's talk about 2021 just to conclude our conversation today. Uh, what are you hoping to see in 2021? Obviously, we all want the pandemic to go away, but I mean, in the, in the scenario that we'll, we'll stay on, <laughs> this will probably stay on for a little while and we'll have to keep dealing with it. So what, what does the hybrid model look like for 2021? You know, as we've been saying, nothing replaces the in-person meetings and everybody is waiting for that. So we are planning uh, to be in Cannes in 2021. And at the same time, we are planning to continue to develop uh, the digital complements uh, to make sure that everybody can be there and to get the best in terms of networking and, and business opportunities. As I said, what we're looking, our main concern, not concern, our main objective and mission is to gather the whole industry in whichever way makes the most sense at given the, given the time. All right, thank you so much, Lorraine. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Um, after going on the, uh, on the website and getting things started, I did get excited about what you guys are building. I think one of the things I was scared about uh, with all, all the markets was, are they going to use, are these companies going to use existing systems or create something new? You guys clearly created something new. Also, the reality with our time zones is we need to have something that's more 24-7 and um, it gives us the opportunity to continue to, to connect with people and you guys are doing that for a whole month after the market. So all these kind of challenges that um, that I, I, I did kind of foresee have, have been kind of met. And obviously, while the panels are interesting, I, I like the fact that you, you called it the inspirational moments because it's not the panels themselves. We, we're seeing lots of them right now. You know, that's not going to be the driver. What we really need right now from markets like MIPCOM and, and many others is the opportunity to do business and, and to continue to be that connection between us 
and the buyers or the sellers or, or whoever we need to talk to. So, so thank you very much for doing this work. Uh, courage for the thank next uh, few weeks. We're, we're very excited. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. And thank you for listening to today's episode of the Vid Podcast with my guest, Loringa Road of Midcom. And thank you to the Read Madem organization for helping us set up this interview. And thank you to Nightwood for the music. If you would like to learn more information about how MIPCOM Online works, check out my website at www.andnowglobal.com. I will be posting their webinar up on my website as well as the PDF walkthrough download that the organization created. See you next time. <laughs>